Hello, I'm Brigadier General Laurie Hummel, the Alaska National Guard's Adjutant General. Welcome to this training video, which is intended to familiarize you and the entire National Guard force with the new Alaska Code of Military Justice, or ACMJ. The ACMJ is a large and complicated new law, so I don't expect every service member or commander to know it inside and out after just this initial training. However, it's incumbent upon all of us in the months and years ahead to come to know and understand this powerful new tool given to commanders which we developed with the Alaska State Legislature and our Commander-in-Chief, Governor Bill Walker. The ACMJ is an important part of our efforts to make the Guard more ethical, transparent, legal, and morally sound. Thank you for your service, your time learning about the ACMJ, and your commitment to justifying Alaskans' confidence in their Alaska National Guard. Hello, this is Captain Dunbar. I'm an assistant judge advocate with the Alaska Army National Guard, and I assisted in drafting the Alaska Code of Military Justice. So I'm going to be walking you through uh, this PowerPoint presentation on the ACMJ how we got here. Uh, so I'm sure you're probably familiar with some of the events that occurred before 2014 uh, that cast a pall on the Guard. And uh, the OCI report, uh, one of its major recommendations was that we draft a new code of military justice. Uh, in, in a sense, we didn't have a functioning code of military justice uh, before this one. Uh, the one that existed in the territorial days didn't have a list of punitive articles, so there's no way to use it for things like courts martial. Uh, a note on the presentation, I'm going to try to not just read off the, uh, the PowerPoint, um, let you read that and try to expound a little bit on that. So there are three typical tools for military discipline uh, in other states. First, there is administrative discipline, things like GOMARS and separation and rank reductions. Uh, there's the criminal code, which in Alaska, of course, is the Alaska Criminal Code, um, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. It applies to both civilians and people in the military. And then in other states, there is a code of military justice. This is like the uniform code of military justice at the active duty level. Um, and it allows for courts martial and non-judicial punishment. Non-judicial punishment is the same as Article 15s on active duty. NJP and courts martial aren't always more severe than administrative discipline or than, obviously, than the state criminal code, uh, but they fill gaps. There are additional tools that our commanders can use. It's also worth pointing out that there is no additional behavior that is forbidden by the ACMJ. The standard is the same as it's been before this was passed. Um, what was forbidden before is still forbidden. What was permitted before is still permitted. There are just new tools for commanders to use to enforce this standard. Uh, so uh, in February of 2015, uh, Representative Ledoux from Anchorage uh, put forward this bill, uh, worked very closely thereafter with the Alaska National Guard. The TAG put together a commander's action group, which uh, basically went through the UCMJ and figured out which of the offenses we wanted to have in our code. Uh, we, we spoke with soldiers and airmen, with commanders, with uh, enlisted, with NCOs, with, um, with a broad swath of people in the Alaska National Guard. Uh, and we took from the UCMJ, also from other state codes, uh, and looked to other states for what they were doing, and from the state model code, which was put out by the National Guard Bureau. Um, some of the states we looked to were Oregon, Washington, California, Louisiana, Kansas. Uh, those were the main states that we, uh, we spoke with. Some of the basics of the ACMJ. Of course, uh, it allows for courts martial based on specific offenses that are listed in the punitive articles of the ACMJ, which are in um, HB 126. Um, and we'll go through some of the offenses later on in the presentation. Courts martial in other states are very rare. In California, which is of course a large guard, they only have typically two or three a year. Um, in other states, it's one or even none a year. And we think that'll be more typical for a small guard uh, like ours here in Alaska. Uh, courts martial are for serious offenses. NJP, non-judicial punishment, uh, that is for minor offenses, although fairly serious behavior can be categorized as a minor offense. Again, all the offenses and the maximum punishments are stated in the code, um, and Article 15s or NJPs we expect to be uh, much more common uh, than courts martial. 
last point on this. Um, it also, the bill also creates a framework for how um, we, cre uh, we go about doing a courts martial, uh, or a, a court martial rather, um, but those kind of legal technicalities um, aren't really necessary to be known for most of the force. Um, one, one, of these thing, one, one of these things happens, you'll go to the judge advocate, um, whether you're a defendant or a commander, um, and they work through those legal processes. But those were set out by HB 126. So what behavior can be punished under the ACMJ? Uh, again, this is the standard. It's been the standard. We're not creating new offenses in the sense that there are things that were okay to do before that now we're no longer okay to do. Being AWOL, being drunk on duty, uh, committing a DUI, those things are forbidden now. They're just punished through administrative tools. Uh, these tools uh, will allow us to have some additional punishments and in some cases, again, the, with NJP, have actually less punishment um, and fill some gaps that that are there with administrative actions. Um, but there are three primary kinds of behavior that can be punished under the ACMJ. The first are purely military offenses, which are the bulk of the, uh, of the punitive articles. Um, then there are concurrent offenses, which we'll talk more about. Uh, and then there are offenses that are counter to good order and discipline, uh, or brings discredit upon the service, which are the more general offenses under what's called the general article, Article 134 in the federal UCMJ, or 634 in the ACMJ. Uh, Pause here for a second and note that bolded bullet point. So the UCMJ at the federal level is a comprehensive criminal code, which means things like arson and murder and burglary are in that code. Those are not in the ACMJ. We took those out because we want civilian prosecutors to handle those. The civilian system is more equipped to handle those. They have special prosecutors. They've done a lot of these kind of cases. Um, only certain offenses are included in the ACMJ, and those are the ones that unfortunately are more common in the Guard, or for one reason or another, commanders felt they needed the ability to go after those if civilians choose not to. And that's an important point that we'll stress a little bit later on. What punishments are authorized? So in the history of the Alaska National Guard, one of our Guard's members has never received a dishonorable discharge or even a bad conduct discharge. We haven't had the legal tools. The worst you could get was an other than honorable discharge, unless you were on Title 10 and then the Title 10 people um, uh, prosecuted you. Um, but by and large, uh, you couldn't get a dishonorable discharge, couldn't get a bad conduct discharge. That will be allowed now under a court martial, um, not under NJP. You cannot be discharged. You cannot be confined under non-judicial punishment. Uh, but confinement, again, is allowed under a court martial. A uh, maximum of 10 years, although most offenses are one year, um, and uh, you'll be imprisoned in the Alaska Department of Corrections facility. This is in the bill. Uh, they are required to take our soldiers and airmen. We don't have uh, our own brig. We don't have our own imprisonment facility, so we'll go to the Alaska Department of Corrections. Um, again, courts martial are rare. Um, so we don't expect a lot of people to end up being confined under this, but for the most serious offenders, it is a possibility. Um, Non-judicial punishment, um, three biggest types of um, punishments are uh, fines and forfeitures, uh, restrictions, and reductions in rank. Reductions in rank are probably the strongest punishment available under NJP. So uh, I'm going to quickly go through uh, just a list here, and you have this presentation, hopefully. Um, if not, it'll be available online. And, uh, and of course, the bill itself is available online, and the statute will be available online. Um, and it lists all of the offenses. Um, I just wanted to illustrate the fact that most of the offenses are military offenses. The Guard will have jurisdiction to prosecute you for crimes that are offenses you commit outside when you're not on duty. Um, the truth is that most of these offenses are relatively difficult to do if you're not in uniform or on duty. Absent, absence without leave is a great example. You can't be absent without leave uh, if you're not supposed to be somewhere. So if in your, in, you're in your civilian life and you, you, you don't have orders, um, you're not going to be absent without leave. Same with missing movement, um, same with desertion, obviously. 
going on. Uh, most interesting one here is probably failure to obey an order or regulation. That's called Article 92 on the active duty side. Um, very common. Uh, things like fraternization uh, typically fall under this. Uh, there's a variety of uh, orders and regulations which you are now bound to follow, uh, which you will still be bound to follow. It's just now NJP is available and in some cases perhaps court-martial, but typically it would be an NJP rather than some other kind of administrative action. Here, uh, drunk on duty, unfortunately, probably the most common on this list. Um, we have expanded improper hazarding. Uh, it used to be just a vessel on active duty, but the punishment was much, much more severe. Um, we've included vehicles and aircraft uh, because those, of course, are much more common in our force than uh, naval vessels. Um, but the punishment, again, is much less severe, potentially. For conduct on becoming an officer and for the general article, uh, which is, again is called 134 under the UCMJ, uh, there is no confinement allowed under our provisions. This is different from the active duty, uh, but the state legislature felt that these were um, a little bit broader than they were comfortable with, and so they made, uh, they made it so you, you couldn't be confined. Um, however, these are common occurrences in active duty, um, and there's a lot of case law built up around these. Um, if you have a specific question about the definition of one of these offenses, you can look at the manual for court-martial. So we have, rather than writing our own manual for court-martial, we've basically said that unless it contradicts Alaskan law or the ACMJ, the federal UCMJ and the precedent from the UCMJ will uh, um, have effect. Um, and so the, the definition is included in the PDF, which I give you a link for there. There's actually an app. There's an app for that, and there's an app for this. If you want to get a manual for court-martial, you can get that on your phone, and that has the definitions. If for some reason you can't find a definition in there, uh, please consult with the Judge Advocate's office, and we, we can find that for you. Um, under the general article, last point on this, there are specified offenses like disorderly conduct and adultery. There's a, a long list of those. Um, but there's also the unspecified offense, which is any conduct that is prejudicial to good, good order and discipline, or conduct of a nature that brings discredit upon the military, in our case, on the militia. And again, this is already the case. Uh, if you violate this today, you could get an administrative punishment, like an administrative separation. Um, now, the ability to do a court-martial or an NJP is in uh, your commander's hand. Concurrent offenses. So, these are offenses that could be prosecuted in both civilian and military courts. Uh, again, civilians get the first bite of the apple. And what that means is we will need an affirmative statement from civilians that they are not prosecuting uh, this case before we can go forward because there are double jeopardy concerns. Because this is state law and criminal law is state law and it's the same sovereign. Uh, ergo, you have to um, choose one or the other uh, or it creates double jeopardy under our Constitution. Um, we are still working on what exactly that affirmative statement will look like, and we'll, we will discuss that with prosecutors. Um, importantly, non-judicial punishment does not create double jeopardy, just like administrative action doesn't create double jeopardy. Um, today, you could be prosecuted in civilian court, and even if you were found not guilty, you could still be administratively corrected or administratively separated. Um, it's a misconception amongst the force that um, that creates double jeopardy. It does not. It's administrative. Uh, Non-judicial punishment in the same way is not judicial. It's not before a court. Uh, so it doesn't create uh, double jeopardy. And again, in our system, there's no way to be confined and no way to be dismissed or discharged uh, under non-judicial punishment. But this is an important point. Uh, you could be found not guilty in civilian court, and while we couldn't prosecute you uh, under a court-martial, you could still be uh, administratively separated or receive non-judicial punishment. Now, whether a commander will want to do that um, and whether that would get through, um, given that your defense attorney, for example, an administrative separation, would be able to point to that court decision and say, this person was found not guilty, uh, is a separate question. Um, but uh, there is that ability, and the burden of proof in administrative action is preponderance of the evidence, whereas in a civilian court and in our court, our court-martial, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, last point on this, we have chosen on the Army side to make non-judicial uh, non punishment also subject to beyond a reasonable doubt. That is the standard of proof. So if you have a not guilty conviction, um, certainly that is evidence um, that it would be difficult to convict you uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, the Air Guard uh, follows the Air Force regulations where the standard of proof is not defined.
so here's a list of some of those concurrent offenses. Uh, the most important are DUI, uh, possession of controlled substances, and sex assault. Uh, on possession of controlled substances, uh, marijuana can no longer lead to confinement. That's different from the federal standard. Um, our legislature had us change that because of ballot measure two and the fact that marijuana is now legal in Alaska. It's legal uh, for civilians to use and possess. Uh, that's not the case for service members. We are held to a higher standard in that regard. Um, you cannot use marijuana and continue to remain a part of this organization. And that's the case today, before this goes into effect. You will be administratively separated uh, or administratively corrected uh, if you pop hot for marijuana. Um, DUI and sex assault are aggressively prosecuted by Alaska's civilian uh, uh, law enforcement. Um, but in the rare cases they don't pursue them, our commanders want the ability to potentially do so. Um, I will say on sex assault, you can see the maximum punishment there is 10 years. Um, that's lower than it is for certain offenses uh, on the civilian side. Uh, and that's because we actually took those offenses out of this provision. Uh, we modeled this after Louisiana. So the most severe kinds of, of rape, of sexual assault on a child, those are not actually part of our law in the same way that um, murder and arson and burglary are not, are not part of uh, the ACMJ. We wanted the most severe sexual assaults to be prosecuted by civilian prosecutors who have experience, who have specialized prosecutors uh, to do this kind of thing. Um, but for some of the other kinds of sex assault, um, for some of the lesser offenses, um, we will have the ability to, to punish those. And if you, um, 10 years is still a severe punishment for some of those uh, based on court martial. Um, of course, uh, to be confined, you have to go to court martial and you will have, uh, the, the defendant will have um, a defense counsel. Who does this apply to? Uh, it applies to members of the National Guard. Um, that's the, the biggest group. Uh, also the Naval Militia and the State Defense Forces. It does not apply to civilians, does not apply to Title X service members, or if you are an Alaska National Guard member and you're on Title X orders, the UCMJ predominates, the ACMJ does not apply. Um, important point here, technicians are treated as traditional Guard members. When does it apply? Well, if you're an AGR, it applies 24-7 everywhere. If you're a traditional Guard member, MDA, DSG, um, or you're a dual status technician, it applies 24-7 inside Alaska, including when you are in your civilian time. Uh, even if you're a technician and, and you are working in your quote unquote civilian time, uh, it still applies. Now, uh, there are some limits on what your supervisor can do and how they can use this, um, but it still applies 24-7 the same as it does to traditional Guard members. Um, same with ASD and state active duty uh, within Alaska. So when does it not apply? Does not apply if you are on Title X orders. Again, the UCMJ predominates over the ACMJ. It does not apply when you're outside of Alaska and not on a duty status. So that's if you're a technician or MDA, DSG. If you go to Disneyland on a personal trip, um, you um, will not be prosecuted under the ACMJ. If you commit a, a DUI, for example, you'll be prosecuted, hopefully, under the state law of the state of California, but we don't really have control over that. That being said, you can still be administratively corrected, which is how it is today. Um, administrative options are still there. Okay. Moving on to non-judicial punishment. Uh, this is for minor offenses and is much more common than court-martial if Alaska follows other states. Um, it can be imposed by commanders at all levels, but there are different maximum punishments at the company, battalion, brigade, and flag level. Um, it's for minor offenses, however, there is great discretion uh, for commanders in determining what a minor offense is. So fairly serious conduct can be considered minor under this provision. Uh, Commanders may not delegate this authority, and only commanders may impose NJP. Uh, that's particularly important for technicians. Uh, your technician supervisor, uh, their disciplinary tool is the TPR. Um, only the commander uh, for your MDA DSG uh, unit may impose the NJP. Um, but 
just because you are on quote unquote civilian time for a technician doesn't mean the ACMJ doesn't apply. Um, the, your supervisor could go to your commander and say, um, this is the behavior, I think an NJP is more pr appropriate, would you impose it? And they could do so. Um, so there should be coordination between technician supervisors and commanders, um, both to uh, make sure that behavior doesn't go unpunished, but also to make sure there isn't a, a double punishment or inappropriately large punishments. Here are some of the ma uh, maximum punishments. Um, again, uh, punishments increase as the level of a commander increases. Uh, Punishments are potentially more severe for enlisted than officers in the sense that uh, you can be reduced in rank. Um, you know, ask your uh, sergeant's major, uh, but it is possible to have a long and fruitful career, um, possible, not guaranteed, uh, if you get an NJP. So wrapping up, I want to in particular highlight that bullet point at the bottom. There is no behavior that is now permitted which is forbidden by the ACMJ, and there's no behavior that is forbidden that will be permitted by the ACMJ. The standard is the standard. It's the same standard that it's always been. It's just that now there are additional tools a commander could potentially use. <laughs> NJP is for minor offenses. It will be much more common. Uh, courts martial are relatively rare, but they're for serious offenses and can lead to discharge and potentially uh, imprisonment. Um, service members have the right to be represented by a judge advocate in a court martial, um, and there are a lot of rules about how a court martial must proceed. Um, on the other hand, they only have the right to consult with a judge advocate and then respond um, in an NJP proceeding. But they could have other people speak for them in front of the commander, and of course you cannot be confined or discharged uh, under NJP. Uh, so with this, um, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to the Judge Advocate's office. Uh, the current staff judge advocate is Christopher Weaver, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Weaver, who is very knowledgeable on these things. Um, but in general, our office is available to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.